Drive. <laughs> uh, today I'm joined by Phil Norman uh, of Ghost Martial Arts. Um, just finished a wonderful seminar with him. Um, thanks to James Devine of Scary's Martial Arts. Uh, make sure it's okay. Come on, you can come on over, James. It's all right. I'll see you. I'll see you soon. Cheers. Yeah. Right. See you soon. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yes, thanks for, for giving us a few minutes to sit down and have a chat. No so, problem. No um, problem. It's been really cool, actually, coming over. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure. Always ranting and raving about the stuff that you guys do. <laughs> um, so, yeah, wouldn't you just uh, tell people a little bit about what Ghost is and how it came about? Yeah, so um, uh, elusive combat system designed for sport fighting where the rules allow you to stand and strike. So um, it's something that we can apply to a stand-up system such as uh, MMA or um, even we've even had um, we've had a, a, a champion in uh, full contact karate nice. as well. Um, so from boxing, kickboxing, We've had people winning titles in that. Points fighting works really well in points fighting as well. Um, yeah, so uh, basically where you're allowed to stand and strike with hand or feet, then we, can, we can apply it. Anywhere yeah. you can punch someone. Yeah, well you can punch him in the face or kick him in the face. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. When you start getting into the, the clinch and the groundwork, then that's that's not our area. So we, again, we specialize on that. The benefit of, of that is if you have someone that's trying to cross over, like say, for example, they're a grappler or a, big into BJJ um, and they want to move into an MMA game then we can help them close that distance yeah, they're without gonna, like you were saying hits. earlier there's a lot of the footwork allows you to get in allows you to get in without taking the shots and yeah. again against a, a, a regular stand up guy you can have success closing and bridging the gap yeah. I mean the one thing that I've found fascinating about Ghost and the one thing I always run rave to yeah. people about it is that like always in gyms you'll be showed like oh here's a little you know here's how to weave or here's how to avoid getting shot with something or you know like a little trick or whatever, but with yeah. you guys, it's very much like here's a structure, here's a system, here's how we teach. Yeah. So anyone of any age. Uh, yes. Yeah, so originally, it's it's really developed over like literally decades, um, but the ghost officially got its name about nine years ago now, mm. um, and the reason was it became more than just a bunch of tricks. Yeah. So we had some principles to follow. When we followed these principles, we found that most of the time we didn't get hit and if we did get hit it was kind of like a passing shot or a shot that kind of brushed off thanks guys see ya cheers <laughs> so um so for example so the the, the principles that goes to the very simple one is the first one is to um, stay out of no man's land so if you're toe to toe with someone you're you're gonna get hit so our very first principle is we had to stay out or work around that area the second one was to get off the track so even if you're out of no man's land they can still run at you and because you're confined to a mat or a ring or a cage, they're going to catch up with you on a straight line. So we had to angle off and go either offensive or defensive, but off on an angle. Third one was constant movement, because we found if we, as soon as we stood, stood still and started to throw shots, then we got hit back. Now, even if we got more hits than the other guy, the goal for us is still to try and avoid getting hit. So we'd rather get one hit and move than move, get three shots and take one back. Yeah, so it, it was constant movement was a kind of a really important principle that came in after that. Um, after that, we had uh, every hit has a job. Um, and that was interesting, really, because a lot of people say, oh, oh, you're not hitting them or you're, you're not throwing your shot and connecting the head. It's like, no, our punches have different jobs. Some of them, are, we, we throw them to make the person move a certain way so we get a line on them. We might throw them to hit the guard so that we can open up and get to the target. We might throw them to work a trap to then go into it. So every time we throw a punch or a, a kick, there's a reason before it. It's, it's, not, it's not just being thrown for no reason. Um, and so sometimes people that don't understand might say, oh, you're just throwing lots of hits for no reason. It's just, uh, we're, we're, we're hitting what we want to hit. You, yeah, it's just maybe to maybe you, you don't see it just yet, it's okay. Um, it's funny, like, because I mean, you, you look at guys like Mayweather or like we yeah. saying earlier, Lomachenko. You know, they, yeah. they tip tap and pitter patter, but there's a reason why. Uh, they do absolutely, that. absolutely. There's a, there's a big psychological advantage as to winning the firefight and also taking control of the other person's mind whilst you do your attack. And it just means that they don't they stop thinking about hitting you back. And the, the last principle we have is is um, seek and keep the initiative. So it's about literally keeping that person's mind occupied so they don't get a chance to think about throwing it back at you they don't get a go it's my go it's my go again no no it's my go again no you don't get a go overwhelming yeah memory. so and 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 this is these are the principles which you know they're hard to stick to yeah. but these are the principles we find if we try and stick to them and keep our discipline then 
we don't get hit as much as a regular person yeah. Yeah, would. Yeah, and I mean, like, I'd say prolong any career. I mean, yeah, well, again, again, again yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and then, but then you've got people that do really, really well. Mm. But if they want long longevity in their career, they need a plan B. And so sometimes we might come in as, as a plan B to help prolong someone's <laughs> career, you know, on that side of it. Yeah, I mean, your brain can only take so many shots. Absolutely. And the goal, the goal is, again, right, we're more into not getting hit than getting hit we'd rather we'd rather hit once and not get hit than like I say put like 10 shots on someone and get hit twice you know it's, we'd rather just not get hit at all and the, and the reason is is I think I think what it is is people don't appreciate what it's like to get hit hard yeah. there's a, a lot of um, uh, martial arts where it's a, a lot of pad work or a lot of you know drills and and sparring drills but not against someone that's got like a punch like like Paul Daly or you know someone that's going to yeah. take your head off with a jab and when you have that person in front of you right, like someone that, that, that's got a you know a whack on them then then you, you won't keep your head there you will start moving and yeah, I, mean, like, I, well, I, got, I got really interested in you guys and what you do from my old MMA club we had a well they still train with a guy, a guy called <laughs> jokingly called Big Dave who's right. an ex powerlifter he's like 120 odd kilos yeah and it was you know one punch from him and yeah, absolutely <laughs> you don't want a second yeah yeah and so i mean that's always the fear and it, and, and i think it also comes from from um uh, the, the basis of what we did that a lot of it came from the filipino carly yeah and that being a, a weapons art in so much as you don't trade machetes yeah. so we we used that initially to help us get started like with the fact that we taught we taught every time someone tried to hit you it was as if they were going to kill you so you cannot get hit at all. And so that was the something that we kind of started, led with, and then, and then developed it from there. And then, you know, the principles led in we had techniques, and the, the techniques had to come to work with those principles. And then we had to then put it in the environment of the ring craft. And, you know, like I said earlier in the, on the actual uh, session, the techniques are good, but then we have to consider, oh, you haven't got any room. There's a referee in the way. Oh, there's a cage in the way. Oh, you're going to run out of mat space. So then other footwork has to be applied, and then it has to be developed into strategy to make this all work. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a big thing for a lot of people. I mean, I've sparred and trained a lot of people. I mean, let's say they've taken on at MMA and they, or even kickboxing or whatever, and then they never fought in a ring or a cage. Yeah. And it's you don't think. You, you know, you're like, oh, well, I spar. I've done hundreds and hundreds of rounds. But when you're in there, it makes a massive difference. It, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's like, sometimes it takes, like, half a dozen fights just for people to get used to dealing with the crowd a little bit and not get caught up in it and themselves. Yeah. You know, there's a battle with themselves they have to kind of go through. Bear in mind, your opponent's going through the same thing. You know, the, the, obviously, you know, the other guy's doing exactly the same thing. But a lot of it could be just like, who handles the crowd better? Who handles the, you know, who's got the fitness up there that doesn't blow themselves out too early on it? You know, so there's a lot to it before you even get to trying to just start doing the techniques that we do. Yeah, and I mean, you're originally from Cali, like the yeah, absolutely, yeah, in the center. Cali, yeah, no, grew grew down the center uh, since I was 17, 18 years old. Oh, nice. uh, full instructor under Guru Dan um, in in England. Um, 2000, 2000. Yeah, I was going to say, you're trying to think, was it? No, it's actually, yeah, I think it's actually 2000. I became a full instructor. I was going to say 2010, but I think it's, I think it's 2000. Yeah, yeah 2000. I became a full instructor, um, and have been ever since. Um, and also, then, then you opened up to the umbrella of the you know, Santo. So you had the Savat under Salem Asili and the Thai boxing under Arjun Sajai, you know, Sarasute. And then you had the Shuto, and you had. Eric Pulse and CSW, so we had all that umbrella. Later yeah, absolutely. Yeah, with the Machado, yeah. BJJ with Machado. So all that umbrella um, was my from 17 years old. You know, like I'm 50 next month. So just to kind of put it into perspective, you know, that's that's where it's been. It's not. This wasn't an overnight thing yeah. that happened. It happened through like years and years of other training, and then you know, competing in different you know, MMA and kickboxing and judo and to boxing you know having a kind of a doing a little bit of competitive work in in those areas before this all came together yeah i mean that's that's fantastic as well because like you'll see with a lot of guys who transition i mean um oh what's it michael venom page is a kind yeah, of yeah, fantastic yeah. example of that now where you know he transitioned from yeah. one thing to another and obviously there's certain things that haven't worked for him but it's amazing that what you guys are doing it's not just yeah specific to any one discipline like no absolutely it's been spread out yeah no, and it can it can like i say it's it's you know for sport fighting where the rules don't stand us right so where whenever that occurs we can apply ghost technique ghost principles to that style that that event that competition mm. yeah 
<laughs> and it's fantastic how frustrated people get with this stuff as well, like you were saying earlier. Yeah, like, yes, yeah, so the comment I made earlier was, uh, appropriate. <laughs> like, you know you've done a good job when your opponent at the end of the fight has an expression like they put their finger through the toilet paper. <laughs> and they have that kind of look of like, oh, this like, yeah, you got nothing. And we and when when uh, when I see that happen and uh, I don't I, I, I see the fight and I and I watch the guys and then I watch the opponent and when I see the expression on the opponent's face I went yeah you did a good job there yeah I don't have to you know as opposed to everything else goes on as soon as I see the expression on the face it's like yep yeah, you got him <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, I mean uh, obviously the the Jake D and the Caddy has had a big influence starting Absolutely, off on yeah. it. And Still does. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. It still does. Yeah, it, it can't not really, because like I say, it's it's so ingrained in me since from an early age that it comes in where appropriate. But the the difference being obviously like the JKD and the Carly are, are like Carly being a tribal warfare and JKD yeah. based combatively, and we're talking about the sport fighting system where we yeah. don't want to get hit. So it's not exactly the same, but I definitely draw from those. You know, stars which have been part of my upbringing. Like I've seen a lot of that recently in the, the knife, uh, knife combatives world, where people, you know, the, now that the systems are changing a lot, because many of them were from the Cali world, and you had, you know, like you were saying, you're training with machetes, and yeah. you're in a Western environment, you don't have anything like that. It's no. a very different game. But the reason that I kind of brought that up as well is that, like you were saying earlier, I thought really interesting. There's so many people talk about dirty boxing in MMA yeah. and, then, and boxing in general, but. No one has any idea. Of, like, oh, how do I go learn that? Like, uh, and it's there. It's, and it's there, easy yeah. to learn. You d it's just. It's just sometimes it's just like. Uh, just call Panatuk and then most yeah, people, a bit, most yeah, a bit of humility. Rare, be a little bit humble. Go and yeah. look at other people who like may not have a lot of fighters in their in their group, but can definitely show you the the techniques around dirty boxing to help out your Panatuk and, and just up the game on that side absolutely and there and there's loads of them around as well it's not like it's not like um, you know I had to travel to America to just get the no it's it, it's yeah. there's a, so much exposure out there now it's not hard to do it's not hard to go and you know get upgraded on this and, and and up like your I've, game. I've had numerous arguments with people where you're saying they're like oh you know JKD or Cali or all this stuff doesn't work and you, then you mention Eric Balson and you're like oh well what does he know and it's like well Josh Burnett and all that yeah he's strange you know he's not just a I, I, honestly the, 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 I, I wasn't really bothered about fighting myself yeah. I think what happened with, what started me off was somebody slagged off in a Santo in a Santo <laughs> said oh these guys can't fight well the JKDs can't fight and and I was I was like right all right then. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and, then and then and then I start then I took the uh, Night of the Samurai uh, Milton Keynes Night of the Samurai 2 was, the, was one of the first early MA titles in um, in England that uh, Lee Hasdell ran yeah. and uh, I, I got myself on that show just as like, yeah I'll show them <laughs> that kind of stuff it's kind of like kid stuff really it's like yeah, it, was, yeah. it was like oh my dad says your dad it's one of those <laughs> I think but I took offense to someone you know, saying. I mean, that's why the UFC started. Yeah, you know, yeah. Prove I'm better than yeah, you. Yeah, it's just marketing, isn't it? And, yeah, yeah. and then people were just like wanting something to say, you know. But but it riled me up, and I I had to go and defend the honor of my instructor, <laughs> you know, that time. <laughs> so yeah, that's why I would compete now and then. But I wasn't overly bothered about competing. It wasn't like a, yeah. a big thing. It was just it for me. It was just I had something to really zone in for my training, which was which was great. Um, and then also want to say, yeah, we. I'm JKD and I fight. You know, <laughs> it's just one of those. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. Yeah, well, I know um, like Matt Thornton I've heard talk about you know the, the aliveness and yeah, and, yeah, in JKD and in fighting and martial arts and stuff. And I think that's anyone. Uh, I, know, I know you've mentioned it numerous times. Uh, you had so many people doubting Ghost and being like, oh, that thing doesn't work. And all now you see and yeah, and Jake and yeah, the, di and the difference. Like. The difference on uh, and here's the the big the big difference between like a Carly. Uh, like the arguments that you have in combatives, mm. this works, that doesn't work, or oh, that, you know, is that for you to test it, you're probably going to go to jail yeah. or, or worse, right? But, but mine is a sport fighting system, yeah. you know, yeah, you and test we test that. Oh, it's not a problem. It's like, yeah, yeah gum sugar. And uh, so when they say, oh, it will never, like, and this, this is how it starts, so it starts, it will never work in kickboxing. All right, so we just won a British title in kickboxing. <laughs> yeah, but it would never work in, you know, K1. Oh, we just won a title in K1. Yeah, but it never work in karate. Oh, uh, guys just won the karate title. Oh, yeah, okay, well, it never work in boxing. Oh, yeah, we've just 
Well, uh, yeah, but it won't work in amateur boxing. Okay, he's just won an amateur title in boxing. And so they just keep moving the goalposts. And now it's and now the latest one is, yeah, but a heavyweight winner, it'll only work because you're skinny and Jake's skinny and you can move around. A big guy will not do that. And so our latest one is I've been working with this uh, fellow called Tom who's 120 kilos. And it's not muscle, yeah. um, but he moves. And, and he just had an amazing fight where he just ghosted this big guy and the guy moves it's like is that up anywhere online i'd love to see that uh, we don't yeah so because my guys compete i tend yeah, not to it, put stuff out there <laughs> and, and and to be honest that was i was, I was kind of protecting them so i put like little tasters and clips to get people interested and it's interesting because people will then they'll have an opinion of ghost from a highlight reel i put on yeah, which shows nothing <laughs> yeah. but, but it's okay and i'm like oh that's okay at least they're talking they're talking smack but they're just they're, at least they're talking you know that's interesting they're talking they have an opinion of what they think i is in my mind and what mm. i've made up you know that kind of stuff yeah. which is fine it's fine any big fighter hard to hit that's a, yeah that's yeah so, so the, the cool thing is just like the people move the goalposts the only thing is when they when they it's easy to say oh, it will never work against this but then it takes me like six months to get some guy you know ready and into that line to go yeah so i'm, I'm waiting for my next goalpost to be moved because <laughs> uh, i've got a heavyweight that can move a super heavyweight that can move and he's not uh, necessarily uh, he doesn't look in shape and so he's my greatest advert for ghosts at the moment you know, like Jake was amazing because he's come in and Jake's like, here's the other one, Jake's like a diabetic type one. Um, and so you have someone like that that's now boxing at, for England, at England level. Yeah. yeah. So that was quite a vast achievement in yeah. itself. And he did that in less than three years of going from kickboxing to amateur boxing. He made that switch. That's not an easy and transition. No, and, and so in less than three years, he's, he's at an elite level boxing for England now. Um, and so now what I have is... Uh, uh, I, again, the goalpost got moved, and so now I've got a, a super heavyweight who, who I'm focusing on and just trying to bring him in just to show people that like, anyone could do this. Yeah. Anyone could do this. So it, it almost sounds like you guys are going through like your Gracie Challenge phase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's, oh, what if it's, you do it it's, on it's, solid it's, ground? Or what if you do it? Yeah, 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 yeah. What, do you, yeah. what happens if he's got a knife? Yeah, so, <laughs> so yeah, we have all these, uh, these things come back, and, and they, they don't wind me up anymore. They used to wind me up at the beginning because people would... would would, oh, it's just a joke. Yeah. You get like anything. Oh, it's just a joke. Like I used to make fun of the DL guys before I realized actually, you know, it's quite good. <laughs> you know, that, that kind of thing. Um, and so I understand why people are like that. And so I don't take offense to it. And then, then the next thing they do is they'll start saying, oh, we do that anyway. Or we, you know, they'll copy things or they'll say, no, we've always done it. it oh, it's just Carly. Oh, it's just this. Or it's, oh, it's just that. Because it's just a lazy way of, not researching or looking at what we've done for the last 30 years. Oh, actually know. looking into the system. Yeah, and, it's a, and again, it's okay. It's human nature. So I, I, again, I don't take offense. It's not a problem. Yeah. It's not a problem for me. Um, and then later on, they'll, they'll, they might come and train with us if their pride is, is uh, swallowed. Take, you know. Yeah, a yeah but, and, but, it, and, but the thing with me is, is it's okay. Yeah. And the people that may have slagged me off in, in before, it's, it's okay. I understand why you're like that. And yeah, you come and train, it's not a problem you're more than welcome to come and train and like I say it's easily tested yeah. it's not a it's not a problem it's not a challenge but if you have a concern then we can just help you with it and and we'll just put the gum shot in and, and yeah you could you could find out right. yeah no but it's not again it's yeah. not like a it's, it's not like I'm proud of what we do and it's tested because we test it in sport all the time mm. so I can I can support or back up and the good thing is also is if you do find something that's not right that helps me again because I will just work it. Bearing in mind that I've been trying to break the system since day one. Yeah. So oh, when people say, oh, I'll do this, I'll do that, I haven't re obviously thought about that. And we, we counter the counters for the counters. That's, that's what I try and do because I want to make this best. So it's always moving on, we're always evolving. So if I have someone comes, comes in and says, oh, I want to try this or try that, it's good for us, it's not a bad thing. I mean, that's a sign of, well, to me at least, is always a sign of a good I don't even know the right term, but <laughs> of a good artist. That like, yeah, we just, th there's we just, many that are just like, no, this is it, and it can't change. And yeah. you guys are constantly like, well, how do we make this better? How do we improve it? If you speak to anyone that's been with us or been around us, like, for example, people like Guru Bob Breen and the Defence Lab guys or people like Eddie Quinn who have seen us since the early days as to where it's now and have been around us over the years where we've met again on seminars, the comments they'll say is, oh, oh look how it's changed, look how it's evolved, look how it's moved on, you know, like uh, I've had comments like, 
wow, it's a lot tighter this year than what it was last year, or oh, it's a lot closer than what it was, or, oh, you're doing this now, you're doing that now. And the reason is, is the guys have fought, they've come up against certain things, and then we've adjusted, and now it's developed again. And it's constantly working like that. I suppose the great thing about fighting, too, is that those opponents then see what you guys are doing and Absolutely. then start trying to figure out yeah. how to counter that. And that's a good thing for yeah. us. That's a good thing for the art. It may not be a good thing for my fighters, but it's a good thing for the actual system that we're, yeah. we're trying to develop it. It's a good thing for help developing the legacy of, of longevity of that, building that. Yeah. You know, it's not a bad thing. So a lot of time when people go, they, they might think I take a fancy. It's, not, it's, a good, it's a good thing for us yeah. for that to happen. For sure. I mean, it's... Like I've, uh, yeah, I've had constant arguments with people of all, all sorts of disciplines. Where you saying that? Oh, oh. Yeah, I think slowly running. running I think I'm gonna have to catch. I'm gonna have to catch a plane. I think. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> He's looking I at me like, yeah, yeah. yeah no problem. Yeah. James is here. Yeah. Um, thanks a million, James, for no the problem. seminar. Oh. Um, Phil, absolute pleasure. Thank no, you. No, thanks. I'm sorry. Can I, I c ah, like, like no you know, I talk on. easy. I could talk yeah. forever. No, thanks very much. But I've got to go and get on a plane now. Absolutely, absolute pleasure. Thanks a million, Phil. Thanks very much. Cheers.